We're two hours into trading. It is Wednesday, June 16th, or as I like to call it, Fed Day. The FOMC meeting is today, and we're going to hear from the Fed at 1 o'clock Central Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Time. I'm not expecting any big fireworks today, but traders will be scrutinizing every word to see if there are any signs that tapering is going to take place, or perhaps to see if there might be signs that the Fed is changing its estimates on inflation. Super hot CPI number last week, 0.6%. PPI yesterday, 0.8%. Very, very hot number. So we're seeing prices go up. Lots of analysts believing that this is going to prompt the Fed to take action earlier than they would like to. Yesterday also, retail sales down 1.3%. Where's the pent-up demand? We should have seen retail sales really starting to take off now that the states are starting to reopen, and we're simply not seeing that. I'm a little bit bearish in here. I think that surprise favors the downside. Also, some concerns that growth in China is slower than expected, and that's why we're seeing profit-taking in basic material stocks. So let's take a look at yesterday's pick, ELAN. That was the bullish pick of the day. Came out right about in here, two hours into trading. You can see how the stock drifted lower throughout the course of the day. When you see this type of pattern, you need to simply draw trend lines. And until that trend line is breached to the upside, there's no reason to get into the stock. Although you can see today, it's challenging the high from yesterday. I still like the pick. I think it's good. I'm trying to find stocks that will be good for a day trading opportunity today and that also should perform well over the course of the next day to maybe two days beyond that who knows the market has been dead flat we're seeing asset rotation between groups and sectors one day a group is super hot the next day it is ice cold i can go through the list of stocks i'm not going to do that this is a low probability trading environment baba b-a-b-a was my short pick yesterday and you can see how that stock continued to drift lower and today it's making a new low of the day go into the daily chart and you can see that nice steady downtrend actually a downward sloping channel pretty soon it will be testing major horizontal support so baba also doing what it's supposed to the market is just chopping around back and forth there is nothing i'm sorry I don't see any compelling swing trades with the market near an all-time high. I see a lot of resistance. Mixed green and red candles. We are going nowhere, and the volume is simply anemic. There's nothing going on ahead of the Fed right now. Earnings season is behind us. Economic releases are behind us. These are the dog days of summer. This is when you want to dramatically trim your size, trim your trade count, set passive targets, Make sure that you keep your powder dry because you don't want to piss your capital away in low probability trading environments. Trust me, if you're forcing trades and you're leaking oil a week or two from now, you're going to really wish that you didn't do that, that you had just patiently waited on the sidelines for a better opportunity. Yes, of course, there are exceptions each day and you can find stocks that are taking off on heavy volume, but there might only be a handful of decent picks each day. So I'm doing this recording early. This will also serve as my weekly swing trading video because I don't see a lot happening and I don't see us taking any new swing positions for a three to four week time horizon. We've had a couple of stocks that have become an issue for us. Four good trades have been wiped away by one really bad trade and we are short an SCCO bullish put spread. We're short the 70-65 bullish put spread. And you can see how the stock has broken through that horizontal support that we were leaning on and pretty heavy selling in here right now. It's below the 200-day moving average. This stock does make big moves, so these options will expire Friday. We'll either max the loss out on this or we could see a pop, a short covering bounce in the stock which could easily put it back above the $65 strike price. So we're going to continue to try and buy that spread back for $3.50. It's a loser, but it just goes to show you how we've got a lot of great positions on. That one lousy position took away four winners. 
just not worth forcing the trades right now in this market environment. So that is the clear message. And with the Fed statement coming out this afternoon, we're going to see an initial reaction. Oftentimes, you don't get the true reaction until the following day. So I can't say in good conscience that even if we had a market rally or a market sell-off today that I would want to follow that momentum the next day. They frequently reverse. There's nothing going on right now. Let's go into the chart of the S&P 500 and take a look at that daily chart. And we've got a bearish explosion alert right there. Let's go into that daily chart of the S&P 500. Look at these tiny little candles here. There's nothing going on. We barely broke through that horizontal resistance. I believe that surprise favors the downside. I think now that bulls have tried and tried and tried and tried to push through the high, asset managers realize that they don't need to rush in and chase stocks here. They are all going to be waiting for a dip. So there's no momentum fueling this rally the rest of the way. And these light volume rallies like this, all of these gains that we've seen for one, two, three, three plus weeks right in here, they can be stripped away with one long red candle. And we've seen that time and time again. I can go back to the chart from last summer and you can see a very similar pattern where the market just floated higher on very, very light volume. So we get in here and we just get this. If you check the chart from last August, you'll see tiny little candles, very light volume, and it looked like it was just going to go to the moon. Wham! The door gets shut instantly. And so if you're trying to eke out little profits and gains and get cute with your swing trades in here, it's very tempting because the market was making new relative highs back in here. So very tempting to get into the market. You think, oh, it's okay. I'll be nimble. These moves, that was, I believe, a 100 point S&P 500 move. Just wiped out everything from the prior two weeks. And then by the time this decline ran its course, you can see that a couple months worth of gains were wiped out very quickly. Instead of scrambling to reel in losing positions, what you ideally want to do is nothing in here. Let all this chop and all this light volume noise run its course. And then when you get these market drops like this, instead of trying to adjust your losing positions and adjust your risk, you're going to be sitting back with a smile on your face because you're going to be watching all of these stocks come in hard and you're going to be looking for opportunities instead of managing losses. That's where we want to be with our swing trades. So let's take a look at what we've got shaping up again for the day. I believe that this support level could be tested and we could see a long red candle in here testing this low from yesterday, but then I think support will be established and will float probably back into where we are currently and wait for the Fed. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six tests of this horizontal support level at 424. That tells me that there are probably some sell stop orders waiting to be triggered and that programs will give us that long red candle, flush these traders out, and then we are likely to get a little bit of a bounce. You can see we've got a bearish 1OP cross forming right in here. So let's see. During the course of the video, it may or may not happen. Things are really, really quiet. I'm favoring the short side today because I feel that this move could unfold. And I'm also seeing pretty decent price action on the short side. I see some stocks that are breaking major technical support, and that's what we want. I'm also seeing sustained moves, meaning that not only do, the, do you get the initial move lower, it continues to tick lower and lower. And so I'm going to go right to my favorite short of the day, and we want to see letter C, Citigroup, stay below that 100-day moving average. Now, realize that on an FOMC statement, bank stocks are going to be moving. So if you see a bearish reaction to the FOMC statement and that 100-day moving average is violated, Citigroup will be a great stock to day trade on the short side. If the stock closes below that 100-day moving average, you're likely to see follow-through selling tomorrow. Why do I like this short? 
you can see if we take the trend line and we draw an upward sloping trend line right through here, we have a trend line breach. That trend line breach also happens to coincide with horizontal resistance. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Ah, nice little breakout here. So when you get the breakout like this, you have buyers that are coming in and they're buying that breakout. As soon as the market, excuse me, as soon as the stock rolls over and it tests that support level, was resistance, now support. As soon as that support level is violated, these buyers are going to get flushed out. And then you get that backside that can actually be pretty nasty. So we have a failed breakout. We have an upward sloping trend line that's been violated. We have the 50 day moving average that's been violated. We also have the 100 day moving average that's been tested. And ah, here's the secret ingredient. Look at that increasing volume. That tells you that sellers are fairly aggressive in here. So I like letter C, Citigroup, on the short side today. Let's take a look at the five minute chart and realize that these stocks don't move a lot. Financials tend to move very, very slowly. So how would you play this? Well, if I'm day trading it, I'm going to drop an alert line right there, and I'll drop an alert line right there, and I might even draw an upward sloping alert line that extends right there, but this one may already be through pretty close to it. So that would give me a pop-up alert and tell me that, hey, you know, if the market's pretty weak in here and we've got that bearish 10P indicator and we feel that we have a chance to take out the low of the day, this stock would be a nice short if it can break through that upward sloping trend line. That's how I would play it. So let's take a look at some of the other stocks that we have. NVAX. That is some steady selling pressure. Here's the tell on NVAX. See this market bounce right in here? Support, support, support. Boom! Two nice long green candles stacked. Well, what did the stock do during this nice market run? Well, that took place right in here. It compressed. It couldn't get off the deck. That tells you that sellers, whap, whap, whap. They're hitting every bid that they can. So buyers who are looking to come in and drive this stock higher with the market bounce are instantly met by selling pressure. NVAX wants to go lower today put up that D1 chart, and you can see we're through the 50-day moving average. RBLX. When I'd mentioned to you earlier, stocks that were hot yesterday are cold today. This is a beautiful stock, and we ran this. I love that. Well, let's take a look at an explosion alert, see what that's doing. Uh, interesting stock. I'd like to see it through resistance before I trade it. But RBLX was one that we were taking a look at. You could see how that was a beautiful breakout right in here. And we played it to the upside. I really liked it. But just kind of rolled over and started heading south. Oracle, that's been a nice short today. After the close earnings yesterday, breaks the 50-day moving average. Another failed breakout. That could be a decent short today. Adobe is coming up on earnings. HRB, look at this beautiful upward sloping trend line. You see how tight that is? Every time that trend line has been checked, the stock bounces off of it. Earnings after the close yesterday, big gap down, below the 50-day moving average, stock trading on its low of the day, put up that five-minute chart, steady selling pressure, barely a bounce during this market bounce. This stock wants to continue to go lower. I like HRB on the short side also. So if we get a market drop, these are the stocks that I'm going to be looking at. And HRB, the other thing that I like about it, and City, is that you've got all this room down to the 100-day moving average. Nothing standing in the way. A little bit of horizontal support right here, just above that 100-day moving average. But other than that, a nice, clean path lower. So relative weakness, heavy volume technical breakdown. You have all the ingredients for a good trade. I think I'm going to conclude there because I really don't have much else to tell you right now. The market's not going anywhere. We don't have any news on the horizon that's going to be driving the market. I think this is the time that you want to keep your powder dry. You want to stay on the sidelines. You want to wait for that market dip. And then you want to see just exactly how far it can go. Wait for those support signs 
could be a bullish hammer. It could be a bullish engulfing pattern. It could be a bounce off of a major technical support level like the 50-day moving average, bounce there, bounce there. But in any event, waiting for that pullback and trying to gauge how steady the selling pressure is is going to give us an idea of whether or not this support is going to hold or perhaps we even come down to this support level. Light volume rallies, easily stripped away. Bullish sentiment, fairly high. Let's see what happens with the FOMC meeting today. Good luck with your trading. Take some time off. Practice your golf swing. Don't trade. Stay on the sidelines as much as possible. If you do trade, set passive targets, trim your size, trim your trade count. Really, really go into protection mode right now, risk off mode. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.